Jerusalem of gold. Friends, you're back at the slave's kitchen. That's obvious. You're back with me trying to celebrate Jerusalem reunification. We are going to plan a vegetarian menu, a complete meal, in 20 minutes. Well, it'll take a little longer, but the video will be no more than 20 minutes. We are going to create this fabulous menu of eggplant baba ganoush. We're going to make shakshuka and tabbouleh and some other surprises. It's going to be yummy and delicious. So you can too prepare it with Jerusalem flavors. Although we cannot be in Jerusalem, but we can celebrate it at home with the idea that Jerusalem is the city of gold. I gathered all different antiquities and all kinds of artwork that we have that represent Jerusalem. I might be able to tell you about it in a little bit, but right now my eggplants are anxious to get into the oven and get all broiled up so we can create the baba ganoush. Hi everyone, we are going to make our shakshuka now. Shakshuka is a Middle Eastern dish. It contains all this wonderful vegetables and eggs and all the fresh produce. So we got tomatoes, we got celery, we got eggplant, we got all the good veggies. So the way I do shakshuka, and the way I do it over and over, I put some olive oil in my deep dish over here. Put in the onions, put lots of onions, a big head of onions. I will put in my celery and I will let it stew on my stove right here for a little while until it becomes nicely translucent. And I will show you how we make it. So I have my greens and my onions and my olive oil cooking up almost a storm, not quite. So shakshuka, to me, it sounds like somebody shook something or shake something, but I guess it's because the eggs are a little shaky, but that's English. I don't really know what chakshuka means in Arabic, but we can find out. These are the eggplants that I put in the oven a while back. We got all cooked on the inside, not burned, just baked. Smells so good. The skins are crispy. I'm going to pull out the pulp from the inside and show you how to make a baba ganoush. There are two ways to make baba ganoush, with tahini sauce or with mayo. So let's see which way we're going to go today. I rip the skin apart, and you can see the delicious pulp on the inside. I'm going to spoon it out into my bowl over here. Really easy. I smell my onions and celery in the pan. Mmm, yummy. So, I'm going to continue with my eggplant in the meantime. We got all the pulp off the eggplant quite easy. Spoon it out like so. It's still a little warm 
but I'm going to mush it up. You know, people like all kinds of different equipment to mush stuff with. This is the mesh potato one. It is very, very mushy. And we will continue with it. Back to my frying pan. I'm going, at this point, you could see it's golden. go. We are going to put it back. It's getting heavy. You need a deep cooking pan. I'm going to add very good tomato paste. Nice garlic tomato paste and mix it up just like that. I'm going to add water to have additional broth. I'm going to add some chopped garlic, of course. Onions are in there already. And lots of parsley. This is what my sauce looks like before I cook it down. It's quite loose. I want to thicken it out. I'm going to cook it down. Okay, back to the fire. Going to cover it up and let it thicken out. Here we go. Another very easy recipe to duplicate and replicate. You just buy tabbouleh in a box. So we're going to empty two boxes because each box has five servings. I would like to have hefty servings, so I'm adding two boxes. and two cups of wa boiling water. This is a no cook situation. Anyone can do that. We're going to put the spices into it. I don't really know why they say a pot, only because it might have a cover, but this is a no cook situation, so basically, you can do it in a bowl. Oh, there we go. It's in the pot. I'm gonna mix the boiling water with the wheat and the spices, which smells delicious. And guess what? This is not going on the stove. It's going straight into the refrigerator for 30 minutes. And then you finish it off with some tomatoes, some olive oil. Pretty easy. Into the fridge. Easy going. The Vogel is cooking and cooking in the refrigerator. The sauce for the shakshuka is simmering down. And let's finish up the eggplant. The eggplant cooled off. Just about mushed up and finish it off. I chop onions and parsley. I'm gonna add them into the mixture. Cool. Mixing it all up. Of course, we cannot forget the garlic. Everything we cook in the Middle East needs garlic. Except the desserts. I got a surprise for you for the dessert. Since I'm also going to make some tahini sauce, I decided not to put tahini in the eggplant, rather to put mayo. We need the mayo, we need salt and pepper, and we also need another very important ingredient in the Middle East, fresh lemon juice. So for my two eggplants that were quite sizable, medium large, I'm going to put three spoons, big full spoons of mayo and check it out. I'm going to add the lemon juice at the end. 
see how the color becomes lighter. So when you buy Baba Ganoush in a container in the market, so forget it. I can make a better one at home. You bake it, you scoop it, you mash it up, add your man mayo, onions, garlic, and parsley, salt and pepper, and of course, fresh lemon juice, and you're getting a yummy, yummy, delicious baba ganoush. I'm adding juice of a lemon, I'm mixing it all in. You gotta test it and by tasting it to see if you have enough salt and pepper just to your taste. So here we go. I'm going to take a little test. Mmm, yummy. Remember, you need to put enough lemon, enough salt and pepper, and the eggplant will do its job. Because between the onions, the garlic and the parsley, you got a delicious Middle Eastern side dish. And now for the simmering pot. Simmering pot of the tomato sauce. With the garlic, the onion, the celery, I'm going to simply poach the eggs right into the sauce all around the pot. Just like that. I did add salt and pepper and paprika to enhance the good sauce and give it amazing flavoring. So in this pot, I can put 10, 12 eggs. I'm gonna make 10 of them right now. And it's gonna go back onto the fire and poach itself, just like that. You see, I'm covering it. Putting it on low flame. In about an hour from now, we are going to have the most delicious shakshuka. We're going to have borgol, baba ganoush, shakshuka, and a surprise dessert. Yeah, but don't forget, you need tahini sauce to go with the shakshuka. So I'm going to make that as well. This looks so yummy. This is a meal for kings, King David and King Solomon. Look at that food. We have the shakshuka with the eggs glistening in the middle. Shakshuka means all put together. And we have the baba ganoush, the eggplant salad. Mmm, yummy. The fragrances are amazing. Then we have the tabbouleh right here, or burgo, depends who you're asking, but this is wheat salad. And of course, we have the tahini to top it all off. These yummy dishes befitting a king, for sure. King David and King Solomon would not have been embarrassed by them at all. Look at those dishes. And to top it all, I have a 3,000 year old urn, maybe from the times of the kingdoms. Who knows? But it's all the way from the Holy Land. All this to celebrate Jerusalem 3000. Jerusalem 3000. Happy birthday, Jerusalem. But Jerusalem is more than 3,000 years old, much, much older than that. But the reunification of Jerusalem happened about 53 years ago 
this week. Next Friday, on the 22nd of May, we are celebrating Jerusalem reunification with this yummy vegetarian dishes. Happy Jerusalem Day. Yom Yerushalayim Sameach. Hi, did you think I forgot the dessert? Of course not. Dessert is the most important part of the dinner, of the feast, celebrating Jerusalem, reunification. So this is my own concoction. This is combining all the cultures from Europe to the Middle East in one little dessert. So I previously had made this phyllo dough cups. They could be Viennese, they could be Syrian, and they could be Israeli. Little cups out of phyllo dough. They're all ready to go. So now I'm combining the goodies of the Middle East into the very interesting filling that I'm going to put in there. So first, I'm putting in chopped dates. This is not me. These are chopped dates. Bring the beauty of the Middle East in here, the beauty of Israel. I'm putting fresh orange juice. I'm going to add some Chuck nuts and some whole nuts. Chuck coconut. Some honey, a blend of milk and honey, right? Beautiful. Of course, we have to add the spices. Little vanilla. Some cloves. And cinnamon. All this to be blended into this beautiful, beautiful paste that I'm going to fill up the flour it's with. I'm going to add some more honey. Now that it's all blended and tastes delicious, here we go. Oh, delicious, yummy. I'm going to put it into the cups and bake it for about five to 10 minutes. And then we will really have fun and we have some dark coffee with these little delicious cups of fruit. This is what I'm going to do. So it's not a baklava, and it's not a date cookie. It's a Bacheva special dessert. There we are. I filled out the cups with the delicious dates, nuts, coconuts, honey, and spices, putting in the oven for a few minutes just to warm it up. The honey will meld in and we will have one delicious dessert to have with our special dark Israeli coffee. Ready or not, they go to the oven. Three thousand year old urn is decorating our dessert table. It's decorating our delicious desserts. 
Here's our coffee with cardamom nuts. And of course, the desserts that we bake. These are phyllo dough cups stuffed with dates, nuts, honey, cinnamon, cloves, vanilla. All this delicious, delicious combination, including the honey, to make a wonderful, befitting dessert to celebrate Jerusalem reunification. Lovely. I love you, Yerushalayim. Yemeshkachech Yerushalayim. Yemeshkachech Yerushalayim. I will never forget you, Jerusalem. Jerusalem.